The Cloister of New College is one of those places where you can actually feel that you are standing in medieval Oxford with its oak roof, its windows in the latest perpendicular style built of Cotswold stone. The Cloisters has hardly been changed since the day it was built. It's steeped in college history. The walls are lined with the memorials of famous members of the college and it's a roll call of English science and humanities over the century. But what is a cloister? Why is it here? New College, which is hardly new because it's several hundred years old, was one of Oxford's grandest foundations in the 14th century. William of Wickham, who is Bishop of Winchester and therefore one of the richest people in the realm, was a servant of Edward III and had overseen the building of Windsor Castle. And here at New College, he built on a very grand scale. His hall and chapel are built, as it were, after the model of Windsor Castle, where in the upper ward, the hall and chapel are put together in the same way. And thought was given to the whole of the college, the provision of chambers, the library at the other end, even the great college guard robe round the back, the long room, all attest to the care and thought of the foundation of the college. The warden lived above the gate and oversaw the coming and going in the college and even had a little spy hole into the chapel. The college archives are arranged above a treasury in a fireproof tower by the entrance to the hall. Every aspect of the college has been worked out and is expressed in a bold architectural style, the latest perpendicular style that was being developed in England at that time. Part of the story was acquiring the site and after the Black Death the whole of this quarter of Oxford had become derelict and Wickham was able to buy up uh, abandoned properties and streets uh, with one proviso. The town required that he keep the city wall in good repair. This means that in the rest of Oxford where the town was in control of the city wall it vanished or largely vanished but here at New College it's been preserved. And every few years, the mayor and corporation come and inspect it, climb a ladder and walk along the top of the wall. And thus it is that in New College Garden, we have preserved one of the best lengths of city wall in England, really, um, comparable only with places like Conway and Carnarvon in Wales, for a magnificent 13th century town wall. Here we are at the northeast corner of the town wall. So this tower does give um, effective all-round vision for anyone attacking this part of the town. The problem is how on earth was it used? Because the loops aren't actually that big. You certainly couldn't stand inside one with a six-foot longbow. I suppose you could kneel inside one with a crossbow, but even then the angle of the loop would make it quite difficult to, to get close to it. It does rather suggest that these weren't quite as practical as they might at first appear to be. Now what is a town wall? Um, I sometimes say they're a bit like shopping centres in the 1960s. No one really likes them, we're not quite sure why anyone built them, but everyone had to have one. But they weren't necessarily defensive. In the 13th century, when most of these were built, there was no great expectation of invasion or unrest. It concentrated entry to the town through the gates, so the tolls on goods coming to the town could be collected at the gates and you could hardly get a cartload of food over a town wall. Um, and monies were raised for building them from those tolls at the town gates. But there still remain questions. Outside this wall, there was actually a second wall. Uh, today, partly a low garden wall following the line of the town wall. And we know from a couple of excavations that this was a proper outer wall. So this part of Oxford had a double defence, a feature only shared by Rome and Constantinople. Why was that? We don't fully understand it. It may be that this was the royal approach road to Oxford. Kings, ever since the time that King Dydon was struck blind chasing Frideswide, had been frightened of entering Oxford, we're told. So perhaps the Hollywell Road around the outside was a bypass, passing from uh, Windsor, to Oxford and going to Beaumont Palace and then on to Woodstock. So as the King passed the outside of Oxford he would have seen this splendid double wall. But we don't really understand that fully. Uh, even the, the latest work that's undergoing now is finding remains of a Saxon wall underneath the medieval one. 
So much remains to be discovered, even now, about this rather unknown Oxford monument.